Wonder Thrones is here. A six-part Wonder Soul Minizer is dedicated to discussing the final season of Game of Thrones. Bearded Buddha is joined by friend of Wonder Soul, Shane. Together they will share their thoughts on each episode of the series finale. Stay tuned at the end of the show for ways to connect and to support Wonder Soul. We hope you enjoy. Everything you did brought you where you are now. Where you belong. Home. They're coming. Our enemy doesn't tire. Doesn't stop. <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> One of the best. <laughs> yeah. Uh, welcome everyone to Wonder Thrones, a limited series here at Wonder Soul. I am here with my good friend and Wonder Soul regular Shane. Welcome to the show, Shane. Good evening, sir. Uh, we just got done watching episode one, season eight. I think it's called Winterfell. Yeah, I think uh, that was the uh, episode title. Yeah, yeah. It was Winterfell. Uh, so we're going to talk about the details of the show here uh, later in this episode, but we're going to go ahead and just kind of set everything up kind of like this episode did. Um, just kind of bring everybody who's listening uh, up to speed with you know, why we like Game of Thrones, who... Are the characters that we, uh, you know, are that that are our favorite, <laughs> and uh, um, you know, just kind of give you guys some basic, you know, uh, run around on how we feel about the show and stuff, and then we'll in the later half uh, get into the episode that we just watched. We'll break but, down the final season. Yeah, the this final season. It. Yeah, I think after there's, what has it been nine years roughly? I think um, the show premiered in I want to say two thousand. 13 maybe Pro, man. roughly so like game of thrones and marvel 12. have been doing side yeah. by side almost pretty like, much wow. cool pretty much because this is the eighth season but remember we didn't have any last year so there was like a year or so that's why mm. i think this year is in, it's been on for nine years roughly oh man and it's uh, a really 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 popular show uh we were just talking about before we started recording that like I think there was uh, something I read that said about 17 million people watched this first episode. That's insane. Um, and that's pretty crazy for a channel uh, that you have to pay for usually, either yeah. if you have cable or if you have like HBO Now or something like that. Um, I didn't think about that, but yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, that's just, I mean, all of them kind of are now. With like Netflix True. is a subscription base, so you kind of have... There isn't really. There's no way around it now. Yeah, if you want, no. if you're really wanting to watch <laughs> I mean, good television, yeah. you know, you can always stream it, but you're still paying for your internet, so nothing is free. Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, not to go on a, a quick little tangent, but like <laughs> CBS, like that's like public, you know, yeah. that's one of the common channels, and they have like exclusive. Right, that's shows. how you have to watch the Twilight Zone now. And right? Star it's Trek only on yeah. all access or something. Yeah, so like you gotta that. pay for something. How much like, is that? Not uh, I don't think it's too bad, here. and most of these. Services can be like yeah. five ninety nine, yeah. but like HBO now is like fourteen ninety nine. 
Probably, yeah. I bet there's a lot of people that are gonna cancel that shit in five weeks. I I'm pretty sure like after this show's over, yeah, there's it's, gonna be a lot of people that cancel subscriptions. Now don't get us, don't get it. Hey, HBO's got some good. They shows. got some hitters now. They do, but Westworld don't sleep on Ooh. Westworld now, son. Man, you're caught up. I've watched like yeah. a good majority of season one. I never finished it, but ah, oh, bro, it's a hit. Her, it's mm. probably. I like the concept of it more than like you know Game of Thrones. Yeah, because Game of Thrones kind of falls into this fantasy Lord of the Rings, yeah. like medieval, yeah, with, kind of with vibe, like magic and dragons. It's yeah. not true medieval because you do have like you know dragons and other shit, right? But, uh, yeah, I like Westworld a little bit better just because of the whole, it's like futuristic robots, mm, tech, like sci-fi, like sci-fi uh, yeah. gotcha. AI trying to become like, mm-hmm. uh, self-aware. Yeah. Fucking, it's kind of like really tech focused. Yeah, yeah. This is more But like this brutal. is still, don't get me wrong, this is a great show. But that, yeah. but like I said, HBO, they got some hitters now. <laughs> they got some True hitters. Detectives. True Detectives is a good one. True. It's another great one. So. But anyway. I've only liked True Detective Season 1. Season 3, this last one was really good. Well, I might have to check it out now because yeah, I got HBO good. now. So. Yeah, Season uh, season 2 was terrible. Well, not mm. terrible, but it wasn't near as good as the one with Woody Harrelson yeah. and uh, Matthew McConaughey. Now, like to reel it to Game of Thrones, yeah. is there a season that you don't like of Game of Thrones yeah uh, um, and is there a season that you prefer over the others mm, I'd probably say mm, yeah you gotta say, well, I, I just that's thought of that question. so yeah. I know you're unprepared uh, for that yeah that's a good I'm question I'm not prepared no, for it you're, so. not unprepared. No, I don't you're never unprepared yeah well I, mean, I don't uh, I don't think I really <laughs> have a season that I dislike like they're all good in their own sense like you got you know season one the season one age, well, I kind of feel like that so much stuff has happened. Not to cut you off, or anything, yeah. but but that you know, looking back at some of the flashbacks, you kind of think to yourself like, "Wow, I don't even recognize what kind." That's like its own show. Oh yeah, that was a it, long. It doesn't even time feel ago. like it's really connected. You know, you kind of lose track of that. Yeah, it's just a jump off. Mm-hmm. But now in this last season, we're getting a lot of cool callbacks, mm-hmm. familiar settings, characters that haven't seen each other, stuff like that, right? And we'll get right. into that. But so I've kind of forgotten about the earlier seasons, you know. But a I, lot of people have. I'm sure if they didn't go back and rewatch it before this, because I mean that that was like we just talked about a minute ago. That was nine, yeah, almost ten eight, years yeah, ago. Basically. Yeah, that's a long. There's been a lot of shit that you've done since then, so it's easy to forget, mm-hmm. you know what characters looked like the mind like the details of what was going on back mm-hmm. then so mm-hmm. but i mean there was a lot of crazy shit that happened in a lot of seasons like, true true like every season there was something like that just kind of blew you away like a highlight right like yeah. if you didn't read the books going in which i didn't read the books until i never read the books i listened to them on tape on like the, an audio book like, yeah like, like okay the audible.com or whatever it is oh nice the audio book thing yeah i haven't read or yeah. listened to game i of listened to it between seasons four and five like this when season four went off i wanted more so i was like all right i'm gonna listen to the books mm. and um so it gave you a, it's way more deep of course yeah, yeah it's always it's, gonna be more detailed and it's super detailed like super super <laughs> detailed it's, it's like a whole real world. That there was like a whole book that was like dedicated to like characters that have never even been in introduced. The show. Yeah, or, for real. Wow. Yeah. So there's like a lot or characters of that have been lore. introduced, but like, like I said, there was a whole book on them, and they may have only had like a few, a little bit of screen time. Yeah. Like the the dude that got his face smashed in like a pumpkin. Whoa. Um, yes, I remember that by the mm-hmm. by the mountain. Mm-hmm. Um, there, like, there was a whole book about that there are people in their side of the world oh snap but it, it goes like there's like it, it reminds me of lord of the rings because uh tolkien had this basically almost like a history mm-hmm. of lord of the rings where it felt when you were watching the movies or reading the books yeah. uh like wow this feels like it took place somewhere like this happened either at er- like on right, earth right it's like real um because it's like you said, like so detailed. Mm-hmm. Like every everything that we just watched in this episode, you know, like the callbacks. It's just like those little details that are fun for people who have been watching the show. And uh, really, anytime you're a fan of anything uh, and you can pick up on things, people always enjoy that. And yeah. and so like I've always thought that 
every season had brought something new to the show. Um, there's been some things like last season, a lot of people said they didn't like the pacing. They, you know, when they would travel, different things like that. Um, but, you know, it didn't really bother me. Right. So I, I, I feel like if so many people are watching the show, like over 17 million or so, um, then, like, it's been consistently good. And, oh, yeah. and that's that's really how I feel. I, I don't, I mean, I have favorite moments, but I mean, as far as the seasons, you know, certain events mm-hmm. kind of merge in. But, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I don't like. I'm sure there's slow points. Like you could mm-hmm. go back and watch it, and you'll there'll be like a two or three episode period in every season where it's just like not a whole lot happening. They're still kind of just setting up like what the main thing of that season is gonna be. Mm-hmm. So, um, but for as a whole, there's I would not say that there's a season that I just dislike or a season that I'm just like okay, that's my favorite season in particular. Now, do you have a favorite character? I have or fair characters because yeah. I know there's a lot of good ones. So. Yeah, oh yeah, there's there's I mean you got a lot to choose from. Yeah, <laughs> there's a ton out there. Um, I'd say my top three, if I had to choose three, would be um, Arya Stark mm-hmm. is one of my favorites. That's a good pick. Yeah, like That's just her pick. whole, you know, the faceless men and being that being able to change your face and just assassinate mm-hmm. people, like that's that's pretty sick. She's pretty badass. Yeah, that's a bad. That's yeah. badass. Um, I'd probably go with Jon Snow. Would of be. course, yeah, I mean he's a, he's in he's, my top. Yeah, he's, three. He's just definitely. that like heroic character, and and he's humble. Very, like he's a humble yeah. guy, who and he knows nothing. Doesn't really know a thing. <laughs> Jon Snow, he knows nothing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and then for my third character, hmm, it's tough. There's so many other good ones that I could choose. Tyrion. Tyrion's a good one. He's up there. Oh, dude, he's like top three. Yeah, he's a good one. He's just so smart, intelligent, witty, the way he yeah. can strategize and stuff, man. I don't know, man. I mean... Tyrion's a good one. I know that... Bran's a good one. Bran's, it, Bran is just a good that, one. Right? I just he's kind of underrated, whole, I think. He's got like mind control, basically, bro. He he's can so warg into people, right? Now, right? He's like... He's like the one thing that can stop the Night King, I feel like, or knows how. Like, if he can mm-hmm. go into the past, he can figure out maybe how they defeated the Night King in the first Great War. Or what if he is the Night King and he's it's helping them? He's a, swerving them into that uh, outcome happening. He's yeah. like, hey, we ain't got time for that because in my head, I see that this happens in there's, this order. There's a theory out there that some people think that. Uh, yeah, Bran's the Night King. Some people yeah. think that he warged into the guy that they turned, that the Children of the Forest turned into the Night King. Mm-hmm. They think that Bran tried to warg into him before it happened to try to stop it from happening, but he apparently couldn't. And so now he is also, Bran is also the Night King. That's a theory. Oh. It's a theory. But it's completely it's believable. A, yeah, it's believable. It's a big one that's kind of going on, going around out there, just because there's like some clues they've hinted at in the show. But since there's so many people saying it now, I almost think that it's going to mm. be something different. Well, but, I'll, I'll tell you, to have The theories, Night King, that's, okay, that can be my third favorite character. Oh, yeah, dude. Just He's yeah. so mysterious. He's fucking so powerful. He's pretty scary. He's never spoken a word in the entire show. That's true. You brought that to my attention yeah. watching the show yeah. like tonight. He's like, never he's never spoken. That's right. He never We really his mouth. don't even know what his true intentions are. Like, you know, mm-hmm. other than I mean, I obviously I guess he wants to kill everybody, but I mean, you're really not sure if he wants to kill everybody. Um, yeah. He may just want like I don't know, we don't know what he wants. I guess we'll find out. Maybe, maybe he wants the Iron Throne. That's true. But maybe I he, feel like to somebody who you know is a Walking to, Dead, why, why why do you want a throne? But is he that? really like I don't? He's not really Walking Dead. Like he's mm, yeah. Well, I always look at him like kind of like ice zombies. But I don't. He creates like zombies or mm-hmm. ice zombies. But I think he's something more. He's oh, still like I see what you're going. He's at. still cool. like yeah. Somewhat. He's more than a zombie. Right. Like, his minions like, are zombies. His minions are zombies. Exactly. But he is like still he's not human, but he's got like he's still got characteristics of human, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. Like he's he can, more human he's, he can he's, think, he has yeah, thoughts. Yeah. I'm assuming he can speak, we just haven't heard him speak True. yet. 
think or maybe he's, he doesn't need to speak because they connect. Or maybe, exactly. Maybe he's like, well, you know he's like Bran. He can farce here because Ooh. when Bran's like in his visions with the crows he's and flying around, and stuff, he, yeah. the, the Night King scares him away. And there's the whole scene where he, he, he grabs he him. Grabs him. That's so, right. So maybe that's the way he actually communicates. Now, uh, I think it might be a little too late to mention, but if yeah. you aren't caught up with Game of Thrones, you might not know what the fuck we're talking about. Right. But, Probably not the episode for but, you or the series. But, but but no, like this, you know, at this point, yeah. we're just kind of nerding out and geeking out about yeah. the show and all these details. So right. uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, but I think like something with like having all that details – Having like characters like uh, Jon Snow and the Night King, it, you're, I mean, he's a villain, mm-hmm. but we don't even really know why he's a bad dude. Right. The only thing you really, the only in- thing that you've seen that he wants is back in the earlier seasons, Craster was giving all of his sons was That's giving his right, sons to the man. Night King. So you know, f- the I, the only thing, and you see him turn one of the babies in one of the episodes into a. Uh, whatever they are a the, white walker i guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's or, right yeah i think the you have the night king and then the people that are like him mm-hmm. which they've only killed four of them in the whole show john snow's killed two he killed one at hard home and he killed one i don't uh, even know there's that many but yeah you're right yeah he killed one at hard home maybe killed two there john snow's killed two. Oh, uh, yeah he's killed two sam Killed one, mm-hmm. and um, Sam's a good character. Sam's a great character, and uh, old girl that was with Bran, of North Wall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mirren Reed, I think is her name. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to help yeah, you. With I, that I believe one. that's her name, <laughs> Mirren Reed. But uh, she uh, she killed one mm. in that episode where they killed the the when the Night King killed the three eyed Raven, and Bran becomes the three eyed Raven. That's the hold the door episode oh, where yeah. hold door, hold door, hold the he door. He's a good character too. Yeah, like, that was a, that was a pretty sad part. Th- and seeing that's the thing about this show too is that after and then all he gets th- ripped apart by the fucking who? Oh zombie. yeah, hold door. He's part of the zombie army now. That's right. Everybody who's like, dead is part of the zombie army. Right. Like, bro, we could talk about some theories, but we'll get into that. Okay. A yeah. Later. We. I man, I'm ready yeah, for it. Yeah. Hey, I want to hear yeah, some theories. Yeah. Uh, I got some cool ones. There's a lot of good characters that have died. <laughs> oh yeah, and that's some another pretty thing. tragic deaths. Yeah, like some the whole, really the brutal. Red, the red wedding scene is Ooh. very brutal. Dude, that's like how Where they I got stab into it. the old girl. Yeah, she's pregnant, and they he just they just start stabbing her in her child right there in her stomach a bunch of times. Then they slit her throat. Uh, yeah, they go. Then, they, don't, uh, they don't play around. They don't play games. around. Then they kill. I forget. If they slit John's throat, or if they just like stabbed him a bunch of times, or not John or yeah. Rob, I forget how they killed Rob exactly. But they killed both of them, and then Catelyn like grabs Walter Frey's wife or whatever, and she yeah. that's when she's like, "I'll." Uh, it feels like it kind of feels like yeah. it was so long ago, it was so though. long ago, but it was such a crazy episode. Yeah, and then she basically like slits the girl's throat and just lets out that horrifying scream. And see, this is something that a lot of people in the book hated that they never did in the book. Once they kill Catelyn Stark, like they do in the at the red wedding, she comes back as Lady Stoneheart. She comes back from the dead, and all she does is go around and assassinate the Freys and the Lannisters, the the, the people that did her family whoa, wrong. Whoa, whoa, yeah. But they never brought her back in the show. People thought that they were going to, but they never did. And that's something that I'm glad you pointed out. There are some differences between oh, yeah. the book and There's the show. There's quite a bit. That's yeah. like some people think that the show might end one way and if old buddy lives long enough that he'll end the book and it maybe end the book in a different way. Mm. That would actually be kinda of cool. I yeah, think. be kinda of cool two endings. Yeah. Kind of pick which one you like best. Yeah. Oh, that would be so divisive. Though. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> um, I, I, why? Why do you think? Because like after the Red Wedding is about the time that I got into Game of Thrones. Yeah. Because I didn't start watching the show at the beginning. Um, wh- like, why do you think people like this show? And like, how did you get into it? Uh, I had like <clears throat> all my friends that I game with. Um, several of them had read the books, and. Uh, about the, the time the first season came out they read the books and then they were talking about how good the first season was and I didn't start watching it until 
basically the time the second season came out and they were talking about how good that one was and I was like alright well I guess I better watch it and give it a try and as soon as I watched like the first shit it didn't it took the first episode when Bran got pushed out the window mm-hmm. that uh I was hooked then and then I just blew through the first season probably in like a week and then that's when the second season was just started so I was basically caught up then and I don't know what's kept me no so addicted it's probably the whole the it's written so well like I love the dialogue between characters like there's there doesn't have to be like you usually only get one big battle a season true and other than that it's mainly just a lot of like characters you know fucking each other over <laughs> double crossing each other behind each other's backs mm-hmm. like that's the whole thing with John like last season about like not lying he was like how can we you know trust each other to fight in this great war if we can't even you know sit amongst each other and speak truths mm. and uh <clears throat> but you still have the people that lie and are conniving like Cersei I think that's something to point out, though, is the fact that the show, you never feel like anybody's safe. And right. it's always made really trendy news it's very, when, yeah. like, important characters have died, like, yeah. unexpectedly. Yeah, it's so, very... It's one of the only shows that... Like, in the start, you thought Ned Stark was probably, like, one of the main characters. Mm-hmm. And then, I did. And then, bam, just off of, Just like that, done. his head's gone. You're like, okay, one. wow, he's done. I think it was, like, episode, what, eight or nine... But it was first season. Oh yeah, yeah. It's first okay, season, but it's like it's like towards the end of the season. But you still, you're like, okay, Ned Stark. It's like the head of the house, and he's the guy from Lord of the Rings. Exactly, he's a he's really a, renowned. He, exactly. Actor. So you're like, there's no way he's going to be one of the first pe- people to die on the show. Mm-hmm. And when he's like, off of this, bring me his head. Joffrey says that, and whoosh. and that actor isn't he known for dying in his roles a lot. Ned Stark, the guy yeah, that played, they, yeah, he died. Because he died like, in Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, and as he was Boromir or whatever. He was the asshole that was trying to steal the ring. Hey, everybody listen, tell us what role he's had where he didn't die in the Right. Room. We want to hear from you. But, uh, <laughs> go ahead, my bad. But, um, yeah, that, I mean, that it lets you know how dark the show's going to be. From how that brutal point. and yeah. honest and yeah. real it is. Like, yeah. the world's a dangerous place, and it doesn't Especially matter. back then, like, mm-hmm. not everybody's gonna you're not gonna live super long in that lifetime unless you're like of power or of riches and even then it's like pushing it yeah because people get betrayed yeah. you know there's always because some... like in the book the the start kids they're like 14 to like 16 17 they're like teenagers years old. yeah they're like teenagers oh, okay. they're like super young and like the point they're at now like towards the end of the book i believe they're like super young oh wow maybe maybe i'm mistaken maybe it's when the book starts they're like I think Arya's like supposed to be like a kid, like seven, eight, nine. So and it's gone like ten years, so she's probably like sixteen, seventeen now. Hmm. Sansa's probably like a few years older than her, like eighteen. John's like eighteen, nineteen. So they're like getting to that late They're getting there like, like yeah, teenagers. They're getting, they're getting older. Yeah, middle teenage years. Yeah. But still, that's young to be having to deal with, like... Everything that the they've The fate had of the fucking world now, basically, their yeah. world. <laughs> it, it's getting really high stakes now. Right. Jon and, Snow getting stabbed fucking mm-hmm. nine times, or however many it was, six times. I, I thought it was a lot more than that, right? It was, it was a lot of times he got stabbed by his uh, brothers. Well, he hung four of them, mm-hmm. so I don't remember how... But I thought it was more than that. They stabbed him in the back. Or stabbed him in well, the front. Well, like you were talking about, like every season has a battle. Every season has a highlight, like a moment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, something like that stands out. And it probably was like built up all mm-hmm. season long. And there's a lot of build up in Game of Thrones, but I feel like it pays off. It, it never lets you down. Like even with the episode we just watched, yeah. uh, you know, without going into detail just yet, it was a setup introduction like hey this is where we are now and this is we're gonna get the pieces set up so yeah we're getting we can just go full force yep, for the for the finale basically mm-hmm. like for the this is, it's all coming to an end yeah so it, it, it's crazy that so many people have gotten into this show because um it is so brutal yeah, and it is very. so um dirty and grimy and just you really see like people at their their 
utter worse like not just from their actions but like in these characters man we have this game of thrones to me is like a metaphor for redemption Mm -hmm. it's like the greatest comeback story ever told like to see over each season what the start kids have gone uh, through and where they are like when we just watched that episode and seeing them all you know after everything they've been through it's just like a cool like expression of saying like no matter what things you go through like you can still come out on the other side somehow like right and and they've been through some shit that i would never want to ever go right through. all in their own they all went through own shit like their own different shit like mm-hmm all went through their own struggles and it all made them like better in their own craft like yeah. like John is like super good at like <clears throat> motivating <clears throat> and leading men into battle mm-hmm. and then you got like Arya who's like super good now at being like an assassin basically mm-hmm. and like reading people and being sneaky yeah. and stealthy and like getting to know what she needs to know information, information. out of people and then you got Sansa, who's like just become super intelligent and super witty because she's been around all these. Yeah, they're crazy people, but they're she's been around these super witty people her whole life, like Cersei, and she was around Tyrion for a while. And even though Ramsay Bolton was psychotic, he he was fairly smart. Like, who was the guy that uh, that died last season that liked her and liked her mother? Oh, Littlefinger. Yeah. Yeah. There's he all, was always scheming and stuff and she yeah, had there's a theory out there that uh he did not die, oh, sir. What? Yeah, there's I one of those heard theories. That. Yeah, there's one of those theories out there. Yeah, it's uh cause there's a scene it's two episodes prior because he dies, I believe, in the season finale. Or maybe it's the one prior. I think it's the season finale. But um yeah, that's where because the whole season, he's trying to kind of pit Arya and Sansa against each other. Mm. Is what he's trying to do. He's trying to manipulate the two sisters against each other. And you think that he's got them, you know, about like, you think she calls, Sansa calls Arya in there. And it looks like, you know, she's about to have Arya executed. And at the last second, she's like, how do you plead Lord Baelish? Mm. And that's when he comes up there to like, you know, she told him about all the crimes of killing her uh, aunt Liza, where because Littlefinger pushed her down the little moonwell hole. Dude, he was pretty villain. Yes, pretty ruthless. Yeah. But anyway, he uh, when they five episodes or not five, two episodes prior to that, he was talking to some stable girl and he gave her some coin, and people said it was like some coin from Bravos. Anyway, long story short, it's just a theory. I don't want to – maybe we'll get in-depth into it a little bit later on. But Mm. some people think that he might be part of the Faceless Men. Ooh. Yeah. That's actually Or a Faceless Men used his face to Uh, to, swap. uh, Yeah, the whole switcheroo. Yeah. But in order to use his face, he would have had to have already been dead, which if he was dead, then he's probably a Faceless Man. But some people think that maybe – yeah, it's it's a it's a weird theory. Yeah, it goes down the rabbit hole. Of, yeah, it's kind of you have to go back to like to to embrace the theory itself. Yeah. You have to embrace like okay, well, if you believe that, then now we got to go back further and go. Well, then yeah. this is. Yeah, do you believe this? All right, then let's keep going. But I think he died. But I could be wrong because I, I kind of watched it when I rewatched uh, the previous season. I had read that theory and then watched the season, and there's kind of like subtle hints that he makes that he he kind of like realizes that they might be on to him yeah and i think that when he gives that maybe he got somebody else to be in his place and he died i don't know it's possible but i think he died i don't think i think it's just a theory it was theories people were coming up with in the two years that we didn't have game of thrones (laughs) yeah and that's the thing about this season too is there's a lot of pressure not only because it's the last season but because we didn't have that gap in between. Yeah, it's a pretty big gap. And, you know, just there's a lot of uh, anticipation yeah. and build up and especially for a show that has already so much depth. Uh, yeah, it can really kind of, I don't know. I, I, I tried not to think about that while watching the episode tonight because I don't think that's fair. Yeah. But, but also, you know, 
I didn't really give in to like looking up too much of Game of Thrones in between uh, last season and this new season. So uh, it kind of saved me some of the you know expectations. So I it's I want to know like because you seem like you're more well versed. Yes, in, the, in the in the like, the Game of Thrones universe, like that's why I was uh, really interested to see like what your reaction to this episode was for this season because, you know, you know from the books, from the mm-hmm. audio books and everything else, like certain details that you know I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pick up on. You know? Right. So with it being the last season. I'm really curious to see if you think it's going to like live up to the expectations that a lot of people have put on this final season. Like, will it answer all the questions that everybody has and will it deliver on, you know, uh, certain characters and what their character arcs will fulfill? And uh, are you worried that any characters that you really hope, you know, don't die or are going to die, um, you know, based off of like this episode and everything that you've been hearing? Maybe. Um, <laughs> I'm a little worried. Like, I don't know where it could go. It could go anywhere. It's it still insane. feels that way. Yeah. It doesn't feel like I'm a little. Okay. The only thing I'm worried about is with this past episode, considering there's only six episodes in the whole season. So now we're down to five episodes. Mm-hmm. This one, I just didn't feel like much got accomplished. Like, I, everything. Yeah, it was a good episode. Yeah, they, you know. We got to see a lot of characters meet back Mm -hmm. up for the first time. A lot of uh, interactions that were, you know, really cool to see. It was it was a very good episode, but it um it was just too short for me. I felt like they could have got more done. Like Mm. there was a little bit like everybody. The only thing that happened was you know everybody accumulated in Winterfell, which was why I guess the episode was called Winterfell. Yeah, made sense. But I just wish with it being the last season they would have progress the story a little bit farther like i feel like next week's episode i hope they just get a little bit more done Mm. so but i mean it's all i feel like with them moving maybe at this pace maybe that means that they're getting ready for like some crazy ass battle that is just gonna wipe out i have a feeling that a lot of people are gonna die in the first battle which the first battle is gonna be at winterfell um so i have a feeling that we're going to lose maybe like half of our characters in that battle alone. Wow. Huh? Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to be pretty devastating. Wow. Yeah, pretty devastating. I think by the end of the show, there's only going to be roughly like one to two people per house left. Like one person basically left to carry on the name. Wow. Either that or the Night King wins is the way I see it going. That would, that wouldn't surprise me. Night King would be a very dark ending dark, yeah. but i mean it's been a pretty dark show so i could yeah. see it like going where the, i mean who's to stop the night king from just rolling over everybody mm-hmm. like what if so like what if he just takes winterfell so easily kills almost everybody and then raises them like what if john snow gets raised and becomes a fucking night king mm. or not the night king but like the night prince or some shit like that but you know what happens when like that story goes that way is that for everybody who's followed it, it might be either okay, satisfying, or completely disappointing. But what it does is it I think that hurts anybody who has uh, not got it into Game of Thrones and yeah. wants to check it out because then people will just go, well, it doesn't matter. They all die in the end, and right? Like, and they all turn into like right. rice, you know, yeah. whatever, you know, white yeah. walkers. Yeah. So I think like that's a risky move, but. Like you said, it's been a dark show. Yeah, it's possible. And yeah. I, but do you think it's gonna get the darkest it's ever been with all these characters dying? Or uh, to me, it's not about characters dying. It's like almost in the way they in, they die and the fashion and, and the circumstances around them dying that makes it so uh, like memorable in a weird, sick, yeah. twisted way. But like if they just die in battle. You know what I'm saying? That kind of is like anticlimactic. So I feel like they're either if they do die, they play a major role. The only characters that die in battle are the ones that don't have like so much. Yeah. Unless they're like sacrificing themselves, like you guys go on. Yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. and they somebody pulls that card out. But right. um, I mean, so do you see it really getting to that kind of dark? I see a lot of people dying in this first battle. I think I think the I think they defeat the Night King eventually. 
Um, I don't know if I don't think I hope that they don't defeat him in the first battle. I would be really, really upset. And the rest of the season is just like this is what happened after. Well, all that I mean, happened. if they if they do defeat him in the first episode, you, they still have to worry about you know they Each got other. Cersei. They, yeah. they still got Cersei that maybe is that, the that could King's happen. Landing. But I would be as much as they've built up the Night King to be like. This powerful, like, you know, hasn't come around in a thousand years. He's kind of like a Thanos. Right. He's like, this is supposed to be the super powerful being. And, like, if they just happen to kill him off in the very first battle that they had, I, I, it would, it would severely not ruin the show, but it would leave a bad taste. It'd leave a bad taste in my mouth. I would like to see him, you know, like fuck them up in one battle mm-hmm. and that way because there's still a lot of people that are kind of unsure they know that John's telling the truth but like Sansa's still kind of iffy on like she's still in this not to get too much in the episode yet mm-hmm. but that's something we can get into later but yeah. um, but there's still people that are like not really too sure about what John's telling them about True. the Night King and the Army of the Dead and uh very doubtful. Still. Right, very doubtful. So I'd kind of like, as much as it's going to suck because, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to die, but I feel like they're going to get their ass kicked in the first time they face him. Watching Winterfell probably right. like in flames. Right. So, mm. but yeah, I feel like by the end of the show, they defeat the Night King, but then I think there's only like roughly one to two people left. That way, the at least your the house name gets carried on. Yeah, but everything kind of, the power shifts. Yeah. I think, everything kind of resets mm-hmm. into this, like, new era, this yeah, new Yeah, I think world. it'll be back to the Targaryens ruling. Because, because, you know, you got, John has now been told that he is a Targaryen. Yeah. Well, which was like a, well, yeah. no, I mean, which was like a theory for yeah. so long. It was a super long theory, and then uh, Bran saw it in a vision mm-hmm. so you got to we knew it before john did yeah you know, in this episode we've been knowing it for how many yeah we knew it for like seasons. two seasons now yeah. i think you found out at the end of season six i want to say which i feel like was really good build up and uh yeah. was kind of obvious but not really like because nothing is in the show but you really have a strong guess a lot of people guessed it you know and when you would tell somebody, it's not like you had to convince them. They're right. Like, oh, yeah, I can see Jon Snow being, yep. you know, um, part of that story. And, and it, it kind of pays off in this episode a little bit, too, mm-hmm. man. And we'll get into that. Um, yeah. I mean, really, just to, before we do, uh, like a couple of things. One of the cool metaphors that I see, like, with watching a show like this is um, – there is a lot of that family politics and family drama. Yeah. There's a lot of cool action throughout Game of Thrones. But, like, we were talking about how, like, just character interaction is satisfying because, of, like, you were uh, complimenting the, the writing, just the dialogue and how they all interact and talk. Right. That does more than what's actually happening. So their actions have a lot of cool weight to it because we just – we add, like, a sprinkle of that person's personality. Right. Um, but, like, with the, the, the big bad – really being the dead and the night king that to me always makes me think like game of thrones is like a weird metaphor for how like everything falls to the wayside in front of death like titles royalty riches all that crap doesn't matter and that's like one of the things that Jon snow is like telling people is like hey it doesn't matter what house you go for what happened in the past we're all gonna die here right this is the fight for the living and the death yeah like- and screw land, screw titles. None of that matters if we don't matter. come together and defeat this mythical being, basically. Yeah. And I think that's kind of a cool message in a way yeah. because it just kind of, in a way, depicts this image of like, hey, we're all the living. So exactly. why are we bickering between each other? Because we have one common enemy and that's right. death. And uh Fuck what our last names are. Yeah, all that. Fuck what our hair color is. Fuck yeah. if we fuck our brother. Yeah, like the uh, old girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Oh my god, dude. She's now she's we have some of the most crazy characters in the show. Mm-hmm. Uh we have some of the most like smart, uh, clever ones as well. I mean, there's such a diverse cast of characters in here that um it's just been so fun to watch. And this build-up, it feels like this season might pay off. I think that no matter what they do, it's never going to make everybody happy. No. When you have um, this many 
this much of a fan base, you're always you're not gonna please everybody. No, no. So I'm trying to like use that as like a compass when watching these because, yeah. you know, I I do enjoy the show, um, and I don't want it to fall flat at the end for me. So I try not to have anything to look for, yeah. and I just take what I've been getting. Yeah. And um, well, how would you like it, Dan? With if, if you're, what is if your, my yeah, ending? Yeah, what do you think it's gonna? Um, be? I mean, I think it would be crazy if they went dark and, and Night King wins, but yeah. it wouldn't like be so surprising. I mean, they've done yeah. some fucked up stuff in the show, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I guess I would like to see more of a happy ending, considering all the doom and gloom and shit we've seen all these characters yeah. go through. Um, I know that some characters are going to die, but right. I feel like they're going to be the B, C grade characters. We might lose one A class character here, cool. and maybe one of the Stark kids die. I think that's like very possible. Like Sansa might, you know, I don't know. See, maybe I think not. if any of the Stark survives, it would be Sansa because yeah, you got to think she's true. She's not a fighter. She's like not that. a fighter. Yeah. Like Arya and and John are going to be front line for true, sure. True. They're going to be in there like trying to kick ass. Yeah. Bran is going to be trying to do his warg thing and like stop the Night King somehow or like do something. Right. So and I think I mean the They're Night King may want to be involved. In the the Night King may want to be, you know, he's the three-eyed raven now Bran is. So like that could be like the one person that the Night King needs to kill the most because he's the one that can see the future, the past. Mm -hmm. He's the one that kind of knows how they, they can defeat him. Mm -hmm. so Bran would be on like the top of the Night King's hit list so Sansa's is going to be like if any of the Stark children survive I feel like it'll be her yeah that's a good point yeah but um, just because she's going to be back line the whole time she's going to be like mm -hmm. holding the base well and, and with like all this action happening now don't get me wrong there's been some cool ass action scenes yeah. in this series I don't think it's known for its action. It's no. got it's had some impressive mm -hmm. CGI, the dragons, cool stuff like that. Um, but it, it is going to be awesome to see these characters. Almost like when you saw Avengers, you see all these yeah. different characters. How are they going to work well in that situation? Mm -hmm. It was already cool enough to see them just meet or mm -hmm. or see each other after a long time. Yeah. But when they're like when push comes to shove, like and there's dragons flying and and, and you have everybody bringing what they. Uh, you know have earned mm -hmm. throughout this whole story and now they they get to utilize it one last time maybe who knows so i think that's going to be really cool to see that dynamic and i think that it's good with the pacing that they're doing right now that they kind of set it up they go look guys once we hit the gas it, it doesn't stop and right. maybe it will stop for like the last episode will be like an epilogue i can see that mm -hmm. so i see like if we're if it's six episodes right Yep, I see like four and five being like the battle, um, two and th uh, two being like the like similar to this one, right, this episode. Right, right. Three being the prepare, you know, they're preparing for battle. Four and five, and then six is just like this is what the aftermath. The aftermath, and, and yeah. maybe I, I maybe they do a time skip. Yeah, but I doubt it. I think they just yeah. kind of keep it grounded. But I think like Jon Snow and um, and. Um, Oh gosh, Dragon Queen girl, Daenerys. Target. Yeah, man. Daenerys Stormborn, wow. the I mother the of dragons, the breaker of chains. Wow. She goes by so many names. She's got a million, and I forgot all of them mm. at the moment. But she's I got think... more that I didn't name. I could, I could. Oh. If I was a true fan, I would have rattled them all off. Bruh. But I don't know them all. And what's the What's the language she can speak to? Dothraki, and she can speak Valyrian. Do High you know Valyrian. any of those languages? No, you know that he actually like created those That's languages what Tolkien from did too yeah. man he is such a Tolkien like reincarnation oh yeah thing. it's a very similar world I mean he definitely drew a lot of inspiration he for sure to. for sure um but yeah so we're we're basically gonna get into like details of this episode yeah we'll and, talk break down this episode yeah a little bit. and we're gonna do that uh every week uh this is a mini series here at Wonder Soul but we really wanted to take the the better part of this episode to really just kind of Talk about the show yeah, as a whole, about, yeah, you know, and, exactly. And then we knew that everybody would, you know, would like to just at least get our gauge of like how much we know and all that stuff. And um, but you know, if you haven't seen this first episode, which I'm surprised if you haven't, if you do have any interest in Game of Thrones, um, just letting you guys know spoilers up ahead. And uh, we hope you guys check out the episode regardless, and then uh, come back and listen to this part if. Uh, 
if you want to hear our thoughts on what's uh, going on in the season eight of Game of Thrones. So uh, I don't know really where to start with this first episode. I mean, I mean, we start, I think, right from the beginning. Yeah, like the I mean, opening, we can go in order, right? We yeah, the, the, the opening yeah. scene, um, it opens with, you know, John and Danny riding in on horseback together. It's uh, uh, kind of paying homage to the opening scene of the show. You mentioned that to yeah, me. Yeah, it's, it's uh, in the very first scene, you have Arya running through the crowd, trying to get to a higher point of view to see the Baratheon army coming in when it's mm-hmm. with King Robert with Queen Cersei and the Lannisters are all coming in. And Arya's just a little girl and she's like just in awe by, you know, the marching of the, the army coming in and whatnot. And that's how this season opens. Really cool callback. Exactly. Callback. It's like some little kid, some random little kid just running through the crowd and Arya kind of lets the kid run past her so the kid can get a better viewpoint. Mm. And then it's real cool that you get Arya's kind of standing off in the crowd and you get to see her reaction mm-hmm. as like John's coming in and then she sees the hound for the first time. He's coming in and it's the first time she's seeing Gendry coming behind the hound. It's the first time they've seen each other since King's Landing. There's a lot of firsts. Yeah, it's episode. a lot of firsts. And it's a like long time. Long a lot time. of these characters probably haven't seen each other since season one, two, three. Like, a, like it's been, you yeah. know, in their time scale, you know, it's been five, six years, if not longer, yeah. since they've seen each other. Some of them probably didn't know if they were dead or alive. So Yeah, because a crazy. lot of them are surprised to yeah. see each other alive, yeah. which I think is really funny because they do understand that yeah. this is such a cutthroat world right. that exactly. they are in. I mean, that that's the hounds. I mean, he even tells Arya that at one point. Like, when they first <laughs> when they first interact with each other again, like, uh, the hound basically tells her, you must be a cold-hearted bitch. How <laughs> yeah. else would you have survived yeah. in this world? How else are you alive? Right? Yeah. And uh, so that's kind of him saying, like, does she smirk? Is she? Cool I think a little bit. Yeah. I, they, I think they are. I mean, she's just holding her ground, though. Right? If she wasn't, remember, she had the opportunity to kill him mm. when, when the Hound and Brienne fought each other, um, and she, he was knocked off the cliff, and he mm. was basically laying there, almost bleeding out, and she could have killed him. She, the Hound wanted, yeah, uh, he wanted her. Yeah, he was like, kill me, yeah, end me, and she wouldn't do it. She just left him there to bleed out, Dang, that's and so he didn't rough. die. Yeah, she wanted it to be rough for him, but they were kind of cool at that point. Mm. Like they weren't, they didn't. She didn't want to kill him anymore, basically. Yeah, they started off kind of rough. At, at first, <laughs> he was on her list of people to be murdered, but he took her off the list. And that's the thing or about her character that I think is really cool is that she's good at what she does. Oh, she's a best. but she doesn't just do it to do it. Yeah. Like it's there's got to be a, a legit reason to why she wants to take this person out. So to see her on a battlefield, I, I don't know if she's going to be used in that way. She might be like a spy, or you know, she kind of uh, I think she's be, She kind of tries to sneak around. She's, that weapon, that little thing she gave mm-hmm. Gendry, it's like a big ass stick. Like, because remember she was oh, training yes. with the people at the Bravos with those like right. fighting sticks. Right. It's one of those, but I think it's gonna have dragon glass Ooh. on both ends. So she's just gonna be in there going, whoo, whoo, just spinning that bitch around, just slicing people. In I half. almost forgot she handed that dude oh, yeah. that, that yeah. like. Yeah. And uh, it was like, blueprint. this is the yeah the weapon I wanted you to because he told her I think way on early in the show that if she ever needed a weapon that he would build it for. Her. Wow. And this see is her. that's what's so yeah. rewarding yep. about this episode and. The, and the, and I, I completely agree with like your overall impression of the the episode as far as like man we've been waiting yeah it had a I'm lot of feel lot. good moments because yeah. it's a lot of characters getting to meet each other for the first, first time, time in a long time you had Arya and Gendry and the Hound meeting up for the first time that was a really cool scene the Arya and John meet up was a really mm, cool scene that was cool. She was joking on him about, you know, getting stabbed, right? About getting <laughs> stabbed, and yeah. uh, how did you survive that? And he was like, I didn't. So it was kind of, you know, them joking yeah. with each other a little bit, <laughs> and then they embraced each other in a big hug. It's the first time you really see Arya show emotion like that, and let her guard down, kind right? Of. Let her guard yeah. down, kind of. And and since season one, since she left King's Landing, or left uh, Winterfell when she was a little girl, and went to King's Landing, and ever since then she's kind of had her guard up. I kind of expected it to be like this, you know, and, yeah. and I, I mean, it was satisfying a lot of the moments like you're saying, like a lot of the first them getting back together. Yeah. Um, but like, I still was craving just like a something more, like a, just a little bit more of a payoff. Like, yeah. come on now. This is the last season. Like, like why couldn't they, back. why couldn't they have extended that last scene? 
And exactly. Like, that would have been good. Bran, Bran was sitting outside of Winterfell basically the entire episode. He's just chilling in the courtyard. Mm-hmm. He sees, you know, John and Danny when they first get there, and, you know, him and John hug. And, you know. He they, can tell that, like, John can instantly just tell that this dude is different. Right. Bran is different now. And, um,. He tells, you know, Queen Daenerys from the get-go, he's like, hey, the dragon or the Night King has your dragon. He's busted through the wall. They're coming to the south. We don't have no time for games. We got to get ready, people. Basically is what Bran says. Yeah, he's like, come on. He's trying to break up the happy moment and be like, all right, back to, you know, reality people. We got shit to do here. Back to reality. Right. (laughs) Eminem. <laughs> oh, there goes gravity. Yeah, yeah Bran. Uh, Bran's the only guy there that's taking shit serious. Exactly. I mean, Sansa is. But well, John she, is too. But well, yeah, but he's kind of having like he's riding dragons. He's also and making sexy kissing. time. Yeah, like he ain't really right. taking it as serious as like Bran, who's just like right. sitting there in the court in the cold, just right. like, staring out right. into nothing. He'd see Sam in the courtyard at one point and yeah. tell Sam that he's waiting for an old friend. And then at the very end of the episode, mm-hmm. like Jamie shows up to Winterfell. He shows up trying to be sneaky. He had, you know, black cloak on, had his cloak over his head. It's like almost he didn't want anybody to recognize now, him coming in. Was he running away at the end of last season? No. When or the last had... season ended, him and Cersei got into a fight because That's right. That's right. he was getting ready to take all the troops up north. And she was like, you know, are you fucking crazy? We're not taking our men up there. And he was like, but you saw, because remember they brought an, uh, one of those little zombie creatures? Yeah, yeah. They brought it back to King's Landing to show everybody. That was the whole point. John had to go up exactly. there. Exactly. They all to went up proof. there. Mm-hmm. That was like the whole point of last season, yep. I think. Yeah. And they got the thing, brought it back to Cersei. She told them she would, they would help. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, she lies. So Jamie was like, well, fuck you, bitch. I'm going to go help him yeah, fight. I'm done. And she's like, well, that's, if you leave me, that's treason. I'll have you killed. And she almost get, you almost think that the big, the, uh, the mountain, the, yeah, the zombie mountain, you almost thought he, she was going to make him kill Jamie. But uh, at the last, sucked. at the last second, she doesn't. And Jamie gets, leaves the room. And the last scene you see with him is he's getting on his horse to leave Winterfell. And he looks down at his glove or he's putting his glove over his golden hand. And he a snowflake lands on his hand, and there's no like it's never snowed in their lifetime in King's Landing. That's so weird, right? So it's he like probably winter plays is a finally big ball. here. I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna die though. I think he really doesn't make it, and it's gonna suck. Yeah, you think? Um, well, the way it looks, you know, in the they showed the preview for the next episode, it looks like they're putting his ass on trial. Yeah, which I mean, that's the thing about the show. Now I could see, you know, people being pissed at him, but yeah. John's not gonna let them like kill him no. with the great with this war coming up. Like he's too good of a swordsman to just you know execute. They're yeah, gonna need right all now. right. Deal with him need, after exactly. Or just let him die in battle. Exactly. Either way. So. Um, but that's the thing. Like some people think he's the prince that's promised, which what? that's it, it's kind of like the, the, the whole the prophecy kind of yeah thing? the prophecy the the Azura High or whatever his name yeah. was. He's the guy that defeated the Night King the first go around. Oh. Well, I mean, I I just think that with him being back in Winterfell and them dealing with everything, because you can also you, you see um, that they're each kind of taking their jab at him. Yeah, and. I forgot what he even did to these people, kind of. Like, that's the thing about having that two-year gap. Yeah, that's his whole the Kingslayer. Yeah, and I forgot, like, all of that until tonight at the end of the episode, though. Yep. So. Yeah, that's kind of what we were talking about earlier, how we wanted a little bit more from this episode. Yeah. Like, the last scene of this episode is um, Jamie and Bran. Bran basically waiting on Jamie to arrive. He knew that Jamie was coming. He was just waiting on him. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Jamie in the back of his mind had forgotten about pushing (laughs) Bran out of the window. Thinking it was like no big deal. Right. Like thinking, you know, okay, I'm going up to Winterfell. Most of these people don't like me, but you know, there is a war going on. Mm -hmm. They'll be fine with me showing up. They're probably going to be pissed when I tell them that the army's not here, 
But the last thing on his mind was probably thinking about Bran. And then when he sees Bran just staring at him, mm-hmm. all that shit had to flash back into his head. Well, and man, also, I pushed that fucking kid out the window. It also reminds us, if you were like, dude, this dude used to suck really like that, bad. That, at the beginning of the show, you hated his hated guts. Him, but now I like him. Oh, yeah. You, so it's like, damn. He got humbled when he lost his hand. That, Once he lost his hand, it kind of humbled him up a bit. definitely humbled his yeah. ass, man. He was a fucking asshole before He that. went through some shit, too. They yep. all, every character in the show, no matter good, bad, you, whether you like them or not, they've been through some stuff. And if they're still in the show, then they've came out on the other side, basically. And um, I think that's what was satisfying about this episode, at least, was just seeing this kind of payoff in a small way of like the interactions and, and just kind of going, all right, this is who we are now, and this yeah. is where we are now, and this is what's going on now. From here on out, you're caught up. We got all that out of the way. Now we can like, you know, just run with it and see, you know, not, I was about to say season two, episode two does feel like it, it kind of, this was one big episode. That's what I'm going to look back on it. Like one and two will probably be one big episode. Everything else will be yeah, completely and crazy. Probably when we look shit. back on it, I'm going to be like, they probably could have just made one and two into one episode. Yeah. And gave just us gave us more. a big two hour premiere, man. Yeah, Why exactly. didn't they do that? I don't know. That's what, that's the one thing I had one gripe about the episode. I I felt like it was too short for this to be a six episode season if it would have been a full length season if it would have been a regular 10 episodes i'd have been fine with it just being this episode would have been great fantastic 55 minutes normal episode a great you know build up for what's about to happen Mm -hmm. but the fact that it's a short season and they only gave us a normal length episode it kind of i just felt like they should have done more in this episode well still a great episode true just they didn't i felt like they should have gave us a little bit more and it's gonna throw. I think it's gonna throw like, off fans. Still, yeah, like like all their anticipation is gonna be all out of place because they're not gonna be able to really predict like the length of these shows and how much story and how much you know stuff can happen right. in just these six episodes. So we might get just like I agree with you, man. Like I wish this was longer. I thought every episode was gonna be a little bit longer. Yeah, I had read somewhere early on that I thought. Each episode was going to be like hour and a half minimum. And that would have been perfect. Yeah, that would have been great. Because then it would have equaled out to still being close to a, mm-hmm. the same length as a like normal season. a normal season. season. Yeah. Cause you're basically getting like at least like a half or yeah. a double what yeah. you already got. So, yeah, I mean, I felt like they could have ended it like with just a little bit more. Um, but I'm I'm – I'm looking at it from this perspective. I'm like, well, when it gets really good yeah. and those episodes are long as fuck, I'm going to be thankful that they kind of were like, hey, we couldn't, we just got that exposition out of the way. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. That. You're you don't right, want to hear right. about that for an hour and a half, yeah. but you want to see them you go see at them duking it. You want to see it out with the Night like a, King yeah. for like a solid hour and a half. Because you were like, telling me yeah. like uh, the, the fight. Yeah, for, supposedly from what I've heard that the, the fight scene that they have at Winterfell, it's supposed to be one of the longest fight scenes in cinematic history. Longer mm-hmm. than any movies ever done and longer than any uh, television shows ever done. And you were, you were comparing it to Lord of the Rings Two Towers? Yeah, the it was uh, the Helm's Deep battle. Yeah. Supposedly it was like 44, awesome 45 minutes. Oh yeah, that battle. whole battle is just an mm-hmm. insane battle. So if it's anything... A lot of build up. I'm assuming it's going to be like Battle of the Bastards, but on crack. And I gotta go cool. back and rewatch some of these highlight yeah. moments. I would highly recommend rewatching Battle of the Bastards and just watching the. What's the? Do you know? I it's don't uh, know. episode nine of the last season. Dang, dude. Yeah, it was. Okay. It was just not too long ago, but it's fucking epic. I'm gonna check it out. I'm just this, it the out. the way it's shot, like when when John rode in to save Rickon after he got sniped with the arrow by Ramsey Bolton, mm. and he realized he's overcommitted. And all he can do now, because they're launching arrows at him, is just charge at the enemy. Mm. And his horse gets hit by arrows and taken out. And when he gets up off the ground, he just sees like a stampede of horses coming at him. And he just takes his belt off and takes out his sword and gets in that stance like, all right, well, this is it, I guess. And then all of a sudden, both of the horses, like from his side and the enemy side, just fucking collide, and just chaos is going on around him, and he's fucking dodging left and right. It's crazy, dude. Yeah, it's it's a. I think it's gonna be like that, but times ten or million. I hope. Well, I don't want to forget about these. And some of the actors said that 
the because the battle is supposed to take place like outside Winterfell and inside Winterfell, like inside the castle oh, of Winterfell. Okay. They said that the they like the castle itself they built Winterfell like they built it up more than we've ever seen it mm. like we're gonna see more parts of Winterfell than we've ever seen there's actors that were talking about it was so surreal that sometimes they forgot that they were in a movie because you know a lot of movies nowadays are either CGI'd or it's like if it's on a set it's just like one area it's like if you go through a this doorway right here it's fucking you're off stage but apparently at Winterfell here, it's like you go through this corridor and you're into a whole nother cave or a whole nother corridor into a whole nother room that leads into another part of the castle, into a secret tunnel. Dude, speaking of CGI, yeah. what did you think about the dragon? The dragon scene mm-hmm. where John and Danny were flying around? Mm-hmm. It was dope. It made me want to put on some VR goggles. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, all right, I need to make a, uh, Do a dragon flight a, yeah, simulator. Exactly, a dragon flight simulator. Yeah, because be that would have been dope. insane to just be like 3D that scene right mm-hmm. there. It was, all right. I'll, I'll, why I, I, thought, I thought that they've done a pretty good job with the dragons. They have. Um, they throughout have. the show. I thought the dragons have oh, looked wow. really good. I think in flight, they yeah. look really cool. Yeah. I felt like when they were interacting with them on land at the beginning. Yeah. I wish they would have done some like Jurassic Park yeah, you know, kind of like real. They you can we can see them actually touching something because yeah. it's like at, at the angles that you guys are shooting it, you might as well. Yeah, uh, just pay to have that done when they're in the air. It needs to be CGI. You can't right. do it any other way. Right. But uh, yeah, like they've done a really good job with it. But it, they when they're still, mm-hmm. it looks out of place. Yeah, I can understand uh, that. I can see that. That's just a little small gripe. Yeah, little small gripe. But I think the dragons do look good. Yeah. Um, and I thought that flight scene was pretty dope. Kind of unnecessary. It was but, very unnecessary. But it was just kind of a filler part. It was like just we all like knew because mm-hmm. Sam hadn't told, you know, John that he was. I know what you're about yeah, to think. Yeah, he hasn't told him that part yet. But if John was smart, he would know that only Targaryens for real can ride dragons. Like they're not going to let anybody else. But he's still like love struck by right. old girl. Man. Oh yeah. So he and didn't he didn't realize he's thinking, Oh yeah, I got dragons the, are intimidating as hell, man. Especially when it's faces like bigger than you are. Yeah. Like he's like, I don't know if I want to do this. But he, he could it, just hump, hump him in one yeah. bite and he'd be gone. <laughs> and, and he one had a good John point, Snow. man. You're always like, how do you stay on that dragon link? How do you even hold? Where yeah, do you I always on? thought I was like one of those scales looked like it would just penetrate you. Yeah, just go, like, like it's all it's, sharp. It's, right, it looks like it's as edgy. big as your body. Like you sit on it and it just like. Like still, realistically, yeah, it just feels like that's almost improbable. Like, feels like she needs to get a saddle made a for saddle it. Saddle for I think that's because really honestly they're grabbing like two little like fin yeah. looking things and doesn't seem they're flying safe. crazy fast speeds and banking it yeah super fast skydiving basically just and it just always looks like how are you still it's on insane. this insane but the dragons yeah, good they, they don't look bad but it was uh not needed but nah it but, was just to show you that hey Jon Snow really is Targaryen because I guess because you know dragons would Dragons wouldn't really let you ride unless you were a Targaryen. I don't know if they're being and it also by reminds else. us that they have a thing going on, right? Because we don't see any romantic stuff between them. It's all like in front of everybody else. Right. So they're like, "Hey, remember right. last season?" Um, <laughs> uh, Cersei and all that stuff that we saw in this episode. Uh, before, you know, I don't want to forget about that. What yeah. you think about um, her and the the dude that owns all the boats? Mr. Euron Greyjoy, yeah, yeah, and all that, all that, that little they're, subplot. They're both going. scumbags, so mm-hmm. they're 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 made for each other. They should just, they yeah, just they should just bang it out all the time, all the time, and have kids. I mean, she the, was like, she she said that fucking that witty line, but <laughs> she <laughs> she didn't live up to it. She was like, uh, you if you want to buy a whore. Or if, or if you oh if you want a whore buy one well, if you want a queen you have to earn right she yeah, said that like and then immediately turned around and was like all right let's have sex yeah well <laughs> she all right she did but like, he did hesitate she right she hesitated because he made a point he was like I have given you you know everything that you right he gave her a fleet he brought her the sand snake lady that murdered her daughter mm-hmm. um he brought uh, he brought the golden army back from Wessex 
Um, yeah, he's proven himself. He has proven. But he's just an, a slimy he's, asshole. Oh, yeah, he's still a dick. So yeah, they, she, they're made for each other. But maybe. she also wants to... Fuck her brother still. And she also <laughs> wants to win. I guess yeah. like that's her she sacrifice. Definitely wants she to has win. to. She feels like she has to make. Like I really don't want to do anything with this dude. But hey, I mean we're at the end game <laughs> for you know Avengers. I just but, hope she doesn't sit on it at the end. No, I she's hope, the one person I do not want to see sitting on the throne. And I think, but I could see it happening. Oh yeah, they'll play with it. Anybody, but. I could see any of the characters sitting on it at the end. Because you don't know who could die. They've left it so open, and they've left it to where there's so many people that have been killed already. You really don't know who's going to die. Now, do you think it might be somebody that nobody thinks is going to? And like, it's going to uh, piss a lot of people off, maybe? Like, like not John, like none of the people that people have guessed. Like, it's going to be someone right out of left field. Because I feel like that's, like, very... Possible. Like Gendry? Like Robert sure. Baratheon's yeah. bastard son? The only one that's left? He had, like, 20 of them that Cersei had killed? Yeah. And he's the only one that survived in the first season? Yeah, I feel like they could... That's the one Arya's friends with. It's making him the weapon. He's cool, though. Yeah, he's he's, cool. Uh, he's the one that wields the hammer. Yeah. Like Baratheon and used he's, to. Uh, he's making everybody's weapons. Yep, he's arming them with the dragon glass and everything. Which is cool. Yep. So, uh, but uh, I, that if, if they did, like, a random an oddball winner it'd be like him true because he's like sense. one of the last yeah. people or if it was like like Sansa if she sat on it it'd be kind of weird because the Starks even though I guess John is technically half Stark he's half Targaryen half Stark mm -hmm. and you find out you know Sam tells him this episode that, that, that that's what he is that he's actually the ruler of the Iron Throne but so I could if Sansa would kind of be a weird one just because, you know, they kind of stay up north. Mm -hmm. Gendry would be weird if he sat on the throne. And But I don't think it would be weird if Cersei sat on it. She's been sitting on it for, you know, a couple seasons now. Yeah, I wouldn't true. like it if she sat on it at the end, but I could see her sitting on it at the end. It would kind, that would, she would kind of fall under, like, the Night King winning, kind of that dark, evil kind of person winning. Because mm -hmm. she's very manipulative and evil. She's killed a whole lot of people. Yeah. So her, I could see winning, but I wouldn't like it. Um, I could see either Danny or John sitting on it at the end. Um, I could see if, like, possibly them two die, but maybe she has, like, she gets pregnant before she dies or mm -hmm. dies in childbirth, maybe something like that. Maybe the mm -hmm. kid is the king, but her hand which which would be Tyrion if he doesn't die could sit on the throne mm -hmm. until the kid gets older that's a good point I could see something like that but that's still kind of a far out there well uh, well this there's like two I think important things that we need to mention yeah. about this episode uh, Sam and his news that he finds out and the news that he tells tells yeah um Start wherever you want. Yeah, to start. it's pretty crazy yeah. scene. That scene with I thought it was one of the more the better shot scenes of the whole episode. It's where uh, Danny's actually she's going in there to t to thank Sam for curing Sir Joro of his uh, grayscale. She was going in there to thank him and do you know I'm sure give him something in return for doing that and. Uh, and, you know, when she asks him if there's anything he wants, he's like, I could use a pardon. You know, I've stolen a couple books from the Citadel. Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, I also stole my sword from my family. And oh, that's when he yep. name dropped his family was the the uh, Tarleys, I think is yeah, their name. Yeah, sounds about right. Something like that. And uh, that's when she's like, oh, is your father um, uh, Randall Tarley? And he's like, yeah. And that's when she's like, oh, well, he refused to bend the knee, so I, burnt him I, I execute him. At least she didn't say, I don't think she's, maybe she did she say burned him. No, she, she didn't said say executed it. him? Yeah. Maybe, okay, at least yeah. she didn't tell him that he got, they got roasted, like, if you watch oh, the scene she? back, I don't remember if she says, she I think she just to, says executed. But he probably knows, like, well... Um, uh, probably. You're, you used your dragons yeah. to kill Yeah, and them. I mean, when she, she, the dragon, like, vaporized them. Like, they were yeah. nothing but a pile of dust. Oh, and that's it. They're, you say, they. Yeah, oh yeah, and they, because then he's like, 
Sam, he's upset about it, but him and his father really weren't that close. So right. he was like, well, at least now I know I can go home because my brother's in charge. And then she's so, like, well, about that. He stood with your dad, so I had to kill him too. And that's when you just see Sam basically lose it. Like He's like, damn, he my does, whole family. Though, right? my, he's like, my whole family. This girl that I've never met but heard good things about just wipes basically his family name. If it wasn't for Sam, his name, his family would be wiped off the map. Like that's, He's the last son in his family. I forget all about it. When they were standing right. next to each other and that scene's happening, I did not even think about that. Right. And Sir Joro's kind of like, he can tell, like, damn, this is fucked up. And awkward. Like, <laughs> and awkward. <laughs> and then you see, like, Sam's Sam's losing it. But then Danny had this, like, look on her face, like, almost like, she. it's not that she didn't care, but almost like she would do it again if yeah. she had to. Like, hey, man, I know that you're a smart yeah. dude and you're a good person. But, but it was a real shitty, it was a It was a crazy scene because, like, mm. it started out as, you know, her thanking him oh, for like, saving oh, a friend. Cool. They're seeing each other. Right, and, and then it ends with, you know, her telling him that, yeah, I burnt your family alive. And, and, and like you said, it, it kind of wrecks family. him, man, like, because yeah. he runs fucks out him of there. Up. Oh, yeah, he runs out of there, almost gets run over by a horse. <laughs> yeah. Runs true. into Bran that. outside, and Bran's like, yo, I don't care what you're going through right now. Now's when you need to tell John that he is yeah, a target. Things kind of go from bad to not really worse, but it just doesn't get any better for right because he knows Sam knows that John's not going to take that news very well. Yeah, like, he just he knows that now his news. whole life is basically <laughs> a lie. Like every, mm-hmm. everybody's lied to him his whole life that he was a bastard when he wasn't. So and then John or uh, Sam tells him, you know. Also that, you know, hey, did you know that Danny killed my parents and my brother or my yeah. dad and my brother? And, and he's that's like, like his girl. Right. That's his girl it's now. And, and that's, that's like his, his best bro. friend. Yeah. So it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, it's a real fuck situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. So and, you know, Sam's trying to plead with him, you know, like, hey, you did all this stuff for your people. You gave up your crown for your people. You bent the knee for your people. <clears throat> this lady that burnt my family, you think she would do the same? And it kind of leaves John with that thought of like, damn. I don't know. If I tell her that I'm the true king, like that this is what's really going on, what is she going to do? Like, is she going to flip her shit? Is she going to try to kill me? Should I keep the shit to myself? Are we going to get a scene like that, you think? I don't know. I think I think John keeps it to himself for now. I think if he does that, it makes that outcome more likely. Because she'll be mad that it's like, you could have told me. Yeah. You didn't have to hold it against me. It's like, I know what you would have done. You could be right, yeah. You would have burnt me alive. <laughs> She's like, but I love you, John. You know, and then it's like that tour or yeah. whatever. But I mean, I feel like, how do you tell her yeah, straight I up? don't think he's going to tell her just for the simple fact that John's hinted at it several times that he doesn't really want to rule. He never wanted a crown. So I'm sure it would be like a situation where he kind of like, but I'm going to give it to you. you yeah. Know? And and plus she's like been told so mm. much that yeah. you are the queen. You're right. the queen. That she didn't even, I don't think she really wanted it. Right. But so many people were, were reinforcing that with her that yeah. it's gotten to her head now. It's like, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And whoever gets in her way gets burnt by dragons. But it's a cr- it was a crazy that whole the scene the two scenes with Sam right there were crazy because yeah. like he gets knowledge dropped on him about his parents <laughs> he turns or his around. brother dying, then he has to drop knowledge on John yeah. that just like freaks his whole world and out. And they're good characters. All and these the characters. Th- it's kind of eerie that he tells him like he tells him in the Winterfell crypts. Yeah. Like John's down there lighting a candle by Ned Stark, who he thinks is like his dad, yeah. this honorable man. It's like, but, yeah. And I don't think he is I'm, like, persuaded I don't wait. Otherwise. No, I, think, I still think it's, it was, you know, he was doing the, what he thought was honorable yeah, by, he was protecting, protecting him because he knew if Robert ever found out that he was a Targaryen, that he would have killed him. Yeah. And Sam kind of tells John that. And I think John realizes that, but, it's just a normal reaction yeah. to go, oh, you lied to me. Yeah. I was lied but to But yeah, you. I don't think John's going to say anything, especially when he realizes that the Night King is basically like knocking on their door. I feel like it's just going to be fight time. Maybe and- something happens where an action shows her and she picks up on it. Maybe. She must know though, right? Because like you were saying, he rode the dragon. Right. She She's got to know something's up. Like there's something different about him. Yeah. Y'all listening, let us know if you think that she already, I I, I feel like they kind of like sprinkle some things. Maybe. 
where she was like, wait, how is this dude able to do this and that? Because there's not many people. There's very few people that will even like let the dragons touch them. Right. Let alone now Jon Snow's touched them twice. He's ridden it. So mm-hmm. like maybe she's starting to catch on that, okay. Well, of course, that's probably why she's been sleeping with him. You know, she doesn't really just sleep with guys anymore. No, no. She did with Carl Drogo, and that was really the last guy. Yeah, then after that, she's been kind of like top dog. And just not really... She was like not interested in anybody. Right? Mm -hmm. It, it It was full of a lot of cool moments, but it was like... Not really anticlimactic because you really can't say that, but uh, I just will feel like no matter what, two years went by, I just I'm I'm ready for more. Yeah, that's and, the and, way and I. That's a good thing. It's yeah. not a bad thing at the yeah. show. It's just like, dang, now yep. you got me in Game of Thrones mode. Yep. Now I'm like, you got to you can't stop there. You got to keep going because uh, now I, I remember I've been waiting for so a minute. Long. So, uh, anything else you want to mention about this episode? I know there's a, some things we left out, but you know, you guys let us know, right? And uh, we also will probably catch up on that. Because we're always, as we do this series, going to have to call back. Oh, yeah. So there's going to be moments that are going to get For brought sure. up throughout the uh the I'd like to say this is going to be a little weekly mini-series yeah, yeah. that we're going to do. I guess there, and it's going to be uh, six weeks in a row, right? So it's going to be okay. That is correct, sir. Okay. You never know. Sometimes they yeah, take I don't, breaks. Yeah, I don't think there's a break. I think this Good. is just going to be six straight weeks. I'll have to double check on that, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just six too. straight well, um, you guys let us know uh, what you guys thought of this uh, season premiere of the, f- the series finale, yes, right? the series finale. This Which is, is wild. it. That's yeah, so crazy. Let us know what y'all think. If y'all have any ideas of how you think the show might end or if you agreed with some of our thoughts or mm-hmm. if you have other crazy ideas out there. Yeah, and if you guys want us to just like go off and just talk about theories and just other yeah. details about previous seasons or the show in general, you guys let us know. Um, at the moment, we're just kind of just going to do each episode yeah, of this. kind of a uh, review season. of each episode yeah. until we get to the – see how the ending comes yeah, out. Yeah, and we're all excited, man, and we want to just like go through this final season and just like talk about it. And um, yeah, I – I would love to talk in more detail about the previous seasons, but yeah. I think it was nice that we just kind of like laid out uh, some information about the Good show. Good little journey. foundation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And now we can go on from there. But uh, uh, anything else you want to mention? I think uh, that's about it. You know, um, like I said, we're going to be back weekly. So mm-hmm. if there's anything I forgot, we can talk about we'll it next time. Yeah. And uh, so uh, last but not least, overall, you like the, the episode though? Yeah, yeah. I'd give it, you know, uh, out of a, a ten rating, I'd probably get it. Give it like a seven point eight. I was about to say so seven seven somewhere point like eight seven. eight somewhere right. No mm-hmm. higher than an eight, but no lower than a seven. It wasn't average. It was slightly no, above exactly. Average. It was. It was the writing was good. I mm-hmm. liked a lot of the dialogue and the, the what we saw between the characters and you know some we knew a lot of the information already, but it was mm-hmm. cool to see the characters finding out some of the information yeah. like Jon Snow finding out he was Targaryen Sam finding out his brother was burned brother and father were killed um, Bran and Jamie seen each other since the first time that Jamie pushed Bran out the window all the way back in season one mm-hmm. it's kind of what got the show kicked off yeah now here we are and here we the, are at uh, the end winding it down. everybody back in Winterfell so it was a good come full circle feel but yeah. it just left me wanting a little bit more which True. is a good thing like you say uh, it's better to be wanting more than be like Ugh. can we wrap this can up we now? wrap this shit up already like <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm tired of this i'm so. worried about that but right. i think like overall like you said i gotta agree man it was a good show yeah. um i think the acting these actors that portray these characters oh, yeah. have always done a good job it's really cool to see them give this last season just like all they got because you know that's what they're gonna do it'd be cool if we could get like one episode that was like a kind of a more of a backstory into like the night king like Mm. more into like i wonder when we will get that you know that we will like we've had little little bits and pieces like you got to see the children of the forest creating but like there's some other stuff you hear about in the book like supposedly he had like a night queen and mm. um, she could possibly be buried in the crypts of Winterfell. Whoa. So maybe that's why the Night King is headed to Winterfell. Maybe. Dun, dun, dun. We want to talk uh, about, leave this for episode two. Leave everybody yeah, on a cliff yeah, note. Yeah. Just like Game of Thrones does us. <laughs> Boom, bitch, we out of here. 
Oh my god, dude! It's gonna be it's gonna be fun no matter what. I, I'm sure we're gonna like it no yeah. matter what happens. It's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun to watch and it's gonna be fun to sit down week to week just talk about. It. So yeah. thanks, Shane, for being on. Oh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, and you guys, yo, watch the show with us. Uh, tune in. We're gonna have these episodes out as soon as possible. The show comes out every Sunday. Every night, Sunday at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock Central. Central. Yep. Uh, Nine Eastern. Yeah, and HBO Now and Go and HBO if you already just got it right and um so we'll try to get these out as uh early in the week as we can just given our schedules and stuff but right. we're gonna uh we're gonna have a good time so yet again uh hope you guys enjoyed this episode and uh hope you guys tune in next week as we cover uh season two of uh or dang i kept episode that. two episode two i've done that right. again you've done, it. That you done goof sir i've oh, goofed it's all good though it's all good all right till next time guys we we'll out When I was a child, my brother would tell me a bedtime story about the man who murdered our father. About all the things we would do to that man. He never should have trusted Cersei. You never should have either. Death. I felt many faces. I look forward to seeing this one. How long do we have? Before the sun comes up tomorrow.